you guys, it's Shauna with Just Try To Be Nice. This is a video on my journals, my personal journals. So I'm going to bare my soul a little bit here and, you know, what happens, what happens. Um, I've done about 10 to 15 journals while I've been married to my husband. And I see a lot of videos on people's journals and scrapbooks and it's not my, like, diary. Because I, I would, I mean... I wouldn't share that, but it's like a scrapbook journal. But I don't scrapbook like your average person. I don't use scrapbook paper, and I don't use scrapbook stickers and stuff. I use magazines and cards. I call it scavenger scrapping. I think it's the only way to go. And so this is a book that I did. This is the first one of many. Um, and this is part one of a two-part video because it's a pretty big journal. So I don't want to do a 15-5-minute long YouTube video. Those never get watched. So I'm going to split it up into two. And if you really want to see it, you'll watch both parts. <laughs> and so this is a video on my first journal that I did when I was married to my husband. I did many journals along the way, but um, I grew up in foster care and group homes, and it's really, really hard to keep things when you grow up in foster care and group homes. The only thing that by law they have to make sure that you can keep with you is your Bible. And I will do a video on my Bible, and you will see that my Bible became my scrapbook because I knew that it was the only thing that I could keep with me. But that I was probably 15 or 16 when I started doing that, and I was taken away when I was 11. So 11 to 15, I just lost all those journals. But then I married my husband, and I've been pretty stable since then, so I've been able to keep track of all of my journals since then. So this is one that I did when I was pregnant with my daughter, and... I was struggling a lot when I was pregnant with my daughter because I was worried that since I had really bad parenting and no parenting, that I wasn't going to be a good mom and that I was going to be inadequate and that I was going to mess her up and I was going to do the same things to her that my parents had done to me. And I, you know, you can't just go to therapist and say, hey, I have mom issues and I got a kid that's coming in nine months. Can you fix those, fix those for me before she gets here? It doesn't work like that. I've been you know, slowly working through my issues since I was about 20, and I'm 34 now, so about 15 years, and I've, I've come to grips with some of them, but not a lot of them, and I am in therapy with Haley. We go once a week, and sometimes we talk about my stuff and my mom and how it's hard for me to parent my kids because I wasn't parented and my mom was really mean and stuff, but a lot of the stuff, you just have to learn to let it go. You just have to learn to say it is what it is, and a leopard's not going to change its spots. So I got to deal with it and move on. And luckily, I've been blessed enough to have three autistic children. And the beauty of having autistic children is they make you live in the present moment. You can't, you can't not be there. You have to be present with your children. You can't check out and, and neglect them. You can't abuse them. You, you can't. It's just not an option. They're the sweetest, kindest people. And all they want from you is love and your attention and your presence. So if you don't give it to them, then you, you know, you don't get anywhere with your kids. And so I live in the present moment and it's, it's, it's easy for me. I don't think about my past a lot, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to be a good mother to my child. And this is what I did to deal, to deal with that, to par compartmentalize all of my issues when I had my child. And I put all the stuff away. So this is part one. This is going to be this book here. Here's the cover. This is Shauna. And then it's got a cow on the cover because I love cows. Look here. I'll show you. I love, love, love cows. Uh, I have more cows. Over, where do I, oh, yeah, see, here's another cow hiding behind my dialect and my dialect and my canine and my nurse. There's a cow back there. But I do. I love cows. So cows are my thing. I don't know why. They just always have been my thing. And so this is the cover. And there's four parts. There's the kid. There's the woman. There's the wife. And then there's the mother. And like I said, this was how to compartmentalize. So I compartmentalize my personality into four different things. And there's a section on the kid, and I put everything about my childhood in there, and then I closed the chapter on that, and I moved on. And then I put everything in there about a woman before I married my husband, and then I put in the wife and then the mother. And those were like what I want to be as a wife and what I want to be as a mother. So the first part is going to be my childhood and before I met my husband, and then the second video will be after, my, when, after I became a wife and a mother. So this is the first part, and when you first open it up, this is the cover, the inside cover. And this is something that my mom used to do a lot. Anyone that knows my mom knows that this is something that she used to do a lot. My mother had something, she had a form of epilepsy that caused something, it caused something called hypergraphia where she had this like compulsion to write and she really, 
Like, when I say she had a compulsion to write, I don't mean, like, OCD, you got to check the door three times before you close it compulsion. I mean, like, she physically could not not write. When uh, My mom drank a lot. She was an alcoholic, and she drank a lot. And even when she couldn't get out of bed because she was too drunk to get out of bed, she would take markers, and she would write on the walls beside the bed because she could not not write. And so this was something, when she got in one of those places where she had to write, this is what she would do instead. And I hate this. Every time I see this, it makes me like, Rah! but I did this because this is all about overcoming my issues with my mom and my childhood. And then there's a butterfly. And this was from an ad from Lunesta, which used to be this medication a long, long time ago. I don't think it was actually, I think this might be for Ambien, to be honest with you, not Lunesta. And it's just to show that like, you know, this is what I came from. And then this is what I want to become is this beautiful butterfly. And here's the title page, which says that she's sharing her soul, which I really am doing. And I'm very upfront about the fact that it is very personal stuff, and you may not want to read it. Um, and it, there used to be a K here, so it's what it's like being me. And then you go to the first page, and the first page is about being a kid. So I told you this first section is all about being a child. And let's see, my birthday is May 1st. I was born in Asheville. When other people parent your child, because that's basically what happened to me, is my I was raised in foster homes, so other people parented me. And this here is a poem that I wrote when I was in foster care in 1993. See the cow again. Um, this is when I was in foster care in 1993. I wrote this poem. And you can read it if you want to. I'm not going to because I, there's no need to. But this is basically my, my truth. This is my childhood, and this is what it was like. And... You know, I just, all I will point out is, you know, never, 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 never. And, you know, nobody should, nobody should have to feel like their parents never, 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 never them. Um, so, you know, and then you move on. And then why did this happen to me? And, uh, you know, an ugly duckling. And then this is a picture of me. This is actually the prettiest picture of me from my childhood. And Nancy Robinson took this picture when I lived with her when I was 14. And it's an Easter picture. And I was so happy when I lived with her, and I really genuinely felt so much love from her that I looked happy and loved in this picture. And it's the only one from my childhood, and that was because of Nancy, so I definitely put that in there. And a young mind is like gelatin, and the idea is to put lots of good stuff into it before it sets. And that definitely didn't happen. Um, and then, Mommy, I'm scared. Because I was scared and hungry a lot when I was a kid. My parents used to leave us alone a lot and not feed us. So we were very uh, we were very neglected. Not necessarily abused as much as neglected. And um, it wasn't any fun, li fun living at homeless shelters. Again, I was hungry a lot. I have no happy childhood memories. Which, you know, as far as childhood before, you know, being a teenager... That is very sad, but it is very true. I have no happy, you know, birthday party or playing in the backyard or, you know, I can't even imagine, like, you know, uh, taking family trips, vacate. I have none of those memories, none of them at all. Um, uh, again, hunger, but hunger, I did this in different, now I could just use hunger games, but back then I had to find the words hunger and Ritalin because my parents kept me really drugged up a lot as a child. Um, whose tale of hell, hell on earth came from her own harrowing past. And this was not here. I had to, I had to piece this part and this part together with this. With barely enough to eat, what does her future hold? Leave your abuse behind and to understand what it was like growing up a member of the Bartholomew family, you have to have been born here. That was very true because nobody understood my parents except me. And then this page is all about my mom. This is a picture of my mom. That's what she looks like. And yes, I look just like her. And I hate the fact that I look just like her. But uh, there's no way around that. Everybody looks like their mom. Every girl looks like their mom and every boy looks like their dad. It's just genetics and there's nothing you can do about it even though you hate it. Um, so this is a page about my mom. And um, it's, it says, you know, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't stand you. Um, I, it was a long time before I could acknowledge how angry I really was with her. Go ask your mother. Um, you might as well have been orphans. And then, uh, the enemy, um, I'm a bitch. Have you become your mother? And then this like scared lady from the fifties <laughs> from a zombie movie, um, surviving a mentally ill mother. My mom, um, 
my mom, like I said, she drank a lot, but she did have a reason for drinking. She suffered from a lot of mental disorders. She had schizophrenia and she had, um, you know, uh, multiple personality disorder and she had borderline, first she had borderline personality, then she had multiple personality, then she had schizophrenia. And I genuinely believe that the reason why she drank was to try to control that. So I can only hold her partially responsible for the things that happened and for drinking all the time because I do understand her motives for it and it what her motives were not to ruin my childhood and to be a horrible mother her motives were to survive and to cope and so um can your mom be your friend absolutely not and not to worry mom it's all my fault because everything was always my fault and then I don't know if you can tell but on this side I have a pair of handcuffs and then on this side I have a pair of handcuffs because I felt very handcuffed to her she was very manipulative and controlling and she handcuffed me to her she wanted me to be just like her um Bad mom. Mom can learn a lot from their kids. I run to get outside of myself. Um, tequila. The life of the party before she got a life. My mother is driving me crazy. She's suffering from depression. Don't ask, don't tell. The sins of the mother. Things I cannot change. Ever want to be someone else? My mom sucked. As, comfort as uncomfortable as talking with your kids. And there's one person I won't be. My mom. Um, and then we move on to my dad. And uh, why must I always be a failure? My dad is, my dad's very smart. He's a member of Menza, uh, although, you know, being a member of Menza and not doing anything with it is kind of, <laughs> defeats the purpose. But my dad is a member of Menza, and he did go to, um, oh, I can't remember. He went to some college in San Francisco near Haight. I can't remember what it's called. Berkeley. Berkeley. My dad went to Berkeley. I don't know if he graduated or not, but I know he went, and it's not easy to get into college. So my dad's really smart, and... You know, I was always smart, too, which in my house was a problem because being smart meant that I knew that, you know, we should be paying bills and I knew that we should be buying food. And I knew that having strange people over at the house all the time was probably not a good idea. So I actually got in trouble more for being smart than I did if I'd just gone with the flow. So... Why am I always a failure? Daddy, are you okay? Don't get mad. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Of all the things you give her, time is your most valuable. And this is actually a picture of my dad and me. When he came to visit me when I lived at Cornerstone Group Home, we went to Jungle Gardens Mini Golf off Patton Avenue in Asheville. I don't even know if that place is still there anymore, but it's pretty cool, Jungle Gardens. Um, he's the first man in your life. I couldn't be there for my daughter. Do not disturb because I'm already disturbed. Couch potato, slacker, um, pot is a painkiller. Um, so my dad was always sick. He was always complaining about his legs and arthritis and um, chronic fatigue and uh, fibromyalgia and things like that. So I wish I felt better. Um, sick. Uh, in the wrong hands, trust can destroy a child. Uh, chronic. And then this was like, like, this is what I wanted my dad to be. Like the dad that sits down and plays games and is like in a suit and tie. And clearly he works and she's clean. But this is what I got. <laughs> like, this is the dad I got. I passed him a joint and suddenly I knew I'd made a terrible, stupid mistake. Fire it up. Couldn't care less. Um, another satisfied addict. So this is all about my dad. And then this is all about my child. So the eyes of a child. I'm lucky to be alive. The scars of childhood. Um, making the most of your childhood. Uh, why should you care about other people's children? Um, what my family taught me about love. Uh, absolutely nothing. Um, drug rats. Uh, just say no tantrums with Ritalin. Um, sometimes you forget the milk. Sometimes you forget the bread. Sometimes you forget needs are not negotiable. And sometimes you forget that you have kids all together. Um, private crisis. Thank you, mom. And then this was funny. I thought this was funny. This is like other mom, their moms wear bracelets. And my mom wore handcuffs because she was always getting arrested for shoplifting and being drunk and disorderly. Um, and then later on, prostitution. Life is too short to spend with people who aren't nice and survives the unbelievable. So, yep, that's me. And then this is all about, like, how how it felt to be, you know, like, when I was a kid, I can remember I had no friends. I was the smelly kid in school. Uh, I didn't listen. I cussed. I was really inappropriate. Like, I understand why nobody wanted to be my friend now. But as a kid, I didn't understand why nobody wanted to be my friend. Um, so this is all about trying to come to grips with the fact that 
you know, nobody wanted to be my friend, but it wasn't anything I did. It was because my parents didn't bathe me and my parents didn't feed me and my parents didn't teach me how to be appropriate around other people. But um, that really took a long time for me to understand that it wasn't me. It was the way that my parents had made me that people didn't like. And you know what? I will say there was one kid in high school, actually two, Clifton Hallam and Onika Morgan were the two kids that never ever, ever picked on me, ever, 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 in my whole, all through elementary school, all through middle school, all through high school, those two never picked on me, they were always kind to me, but, and because of that, I really, you know, believed that I was okay, but that people just had to see a different side of me, and eventually when I got into high school, and I was able to take care of myself, and I showed people that different side of me, people got to see that I was a pretty cool kid. But it just, it's its hard when you smell and you have you don't have any clothes. I was 12 years old before I got a pair of blue jeans. I literally used to wear corduroys to school every day. In the late 80s, I was still wearing corduroys. So, you know, I was needless to say, and plaid. It was bad. It was really bad. So this is all about, like, being the ugly duckling. And, um, you know, why are you, why are they talking about me? feeling ugly. I was beautiful Rose who never got to show it for there was never any sun to water or nourish me. And this is actually, this right here is what spawned my poem, the very first poem I ever had published. It's called Holding Up the Sun. And this little line that I wrote right here because of this is what inspired that whole poem. I'll do a video on that poem when I do my Bible. Um, in all that is me, there is a seed of mystery. Uh, my body is reinventing itself. And listen to your child. Come from caring, not judgment. I'm so sorry. And then this is a picture of me. And this is a picture of me when I first got taken away into foster care. And I look so rough. Like, I still had lice in my hair. And uh, my face, I was still really dirty. And I still had lots of spots on my teeth. And I just, I'd never been to the dentist. And it was just really rough. So I, like... I still cover it up and make you work to see what I used to look like back then. And then this is all about the woman. This is the woman um, that I want to become, that I wanted to become. And before I left my husband, you know, before I married my husband and after I left all of this behind. So um, enjoy the world around you. Become more of who you are. Who says you can't have it all? Um, you know, have faith. Be a hottie. And then this is like... You know, everyone has a weakness, and back then my only weakness was that I used to smoke Marlboro Reds. Um, I couldn't stop hurting myself. Um, drugs. Um, this is this used to be an ad for, I think it was for some bipolar medication when they first came out with bipolar medication. And um, instituted not in psychiatric institutions, in group homes. I want to be very clear about that. I've never lived in a psychiatric institution. And then this is... Um, to whom it may concern, I want the courage to do what I should, to feel good about me, to put on a nice dress, to have dinner. I want to smile again. I want to love myself. I want to be beautiful. I want to be confident. Um, I am the product of a lifetime of learning. I am confident. I am beautiful. I am unique, special, extraordinary, rare. What makes a woman beautiful? I am above average. Is it the way she looks or the way she looks at the world? Is it the curve of her cheekbone or the strength of her backbone? Because looking beautiful is one thing, but being a beautiful person is more important. And I am stronger than my past. And find out what you're worth. So this page was just really all about, like, just forget all of this. Just forget all of this. This is this is just what it used to be. But this is what it can be. So then you move on to the next page, which is changing forever. Um, facing her dark side and finding her soul. I've become more about protecting myself and making sure that I take care of myself and my family. It's actually kind of great to be me. It's never too late in fiction or in life to revise. Um, each year the hills get steeper and the roads get rockier, but the journey it gets longer. Um, nothing is so strong as gentleness and nothing is so gentle as strength. Um, open your effing mind. Isn't it time you started thinking about number one? And for the first time in a long time, I feel that a miracle lay just around the corner. She's changed her life and the life of her family. I shall stay the way that I am because I do not give a damn. Um, it's payback time. Don't be afraid to live your life to the fullest. Never give up, but be ready to go through some hell. And I took a chance on a normal life, which 
That's really true. I did take a chance on a normal life. It was very scary for me to jump off the ghetto project fence and into the suburbs with my husband driving an SUV and taking my kids to soccer practice. That was really, really hard for me to do. And I'll tell you what, I sat on that fence for a really, really, really long time. And I really tried to stay, you know, this really cool ghetto suburban hip soccer mom, but it doesn't work that way. So I took a chance on a normal life and it worked for me, but it, you know, it was not easy. And then <clears throat> this is some, uh, you know, life has no master plan and looking to escape reality. And these are actually lyrics from a lady named Annie DeFranco. And yeah, it's Annie. It's not Annie. She hates when you call her Annie. Her name is Annie DeFranco. And when I was, um, pregnant with my daughter, I really struggled a lot with like, or, you know, like when I grew up in group homes and I was pregnant and I was struggling to learn, like, how do I become a good person and how do I become a good mother and how do I become a nice friend? Because nobody ever taught me these things. And so um, this girl I used to live with, Joanna, introduced me to Ani and she really, Ani, not Joanna, taught me a lot of life lessons through her songs. I would just listen to her songs again and again and again. Now, this is way back before the iPhone and the iTunes and the YouTube. And, I mean, I had CDs, like actual CDs. And if I wanted to listen to a song, I had to listen to the CD and skip to the song. So I would listen to the whole CD again and again and again and again. And I just learned so much from her. And if you haven't ever heard of her, you should definitely check her out because she really, really, really did help me a lot as a person to become the person that I am today. And so these are some of the most influential songs. And one is Hell Yeah, and one is Letter to a John, and one is Untouchable Face. And so I really just learned so much from her. And, you know, and then this one, this is in every life mistakes are made. Choosing not to make them again is the key to learning. No one is perfect. And then this is, you know, the most powerful person on earth, being a mom, a wife, a daughter, a survivor, a best friend. I am the master of my universe. Um, the girl in the office next door. I've learned to say no. I'm a recovering perfectionist. And how will the wolves survive without me to protect them? Hmm. Oh, well. Because when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided that I was going to leave my family behind. And I wasn't ever going to talk to my mother or father again. And I didn't ever talk to them again until my mother was murdered. And I had my daughter in 2000 and my mother was murdered in 2003. My mother never spoke with my daughter. My mother never saw pictures of her. She never knew anything about her. She did not come to my wedding. She did not come to my children's births. My children have no idea what my mom even looks like. They have, I mean, they know she looks like me, but that's it. They don't have any idea because my mother didn't earn the right to be a grandmother. So I made sure that that was, that was not in the cards for her. And that's what that is saying is, you know, how will the wolves survive without me to take care of them? And, uh, and then this is, you know, take great care of yourself. Make it a habit. Live your your best life. Take time for me. You, my friend, are genius. You find peace beyond the ordinary. Who says you have to be all sweetness and light? A little tartness can be refreshing. And love yourself. Dude, we mentioned you'll feel more connected. We are always the same age inside. And treat yourself to something special. So these are just, you know, inspirational things. And then this page used to have these pictures. And they used to look like this. But I took them out for a Throwback Thursday post on Facebook. And so this is a picture of my mom and me when I was about six months old, I think. She had taken me up to visit with her dad in Philadelphia. And we took the train. And that's a picture of my mom and my dad and me. And then this picture is so old, I would like to point out that it is an actual can you see it? An original Polaroid land photograph. <laughs> so it's hard. It's like thick and hard and it has all this stuff on the back, which I think is cool. I love old stuff. And then this is a picture of my mom feeding me a bottle. Hmm. It's funny because later on we found out that there were sleeping pills in all those bottles that she'd been feeding me, but at that time nobody knew. So there you go. That's the first part of my video or of my journal. And that is the child and the woman. And now the second part is going to be the wife and the mother. So I will come back with that video in just a little bit. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.